Brother Charles, Charles Moody, everybody. This is my friend from Southside Chicago. He is doing amazing things down there. Um, I'm so thankful for his time to join me and um, share his heart with us. So I hope you guys, everybody watching, will enjoy this and learn something and spend these next few minutes, um, if you're watching, and just really listen to the heart uh, of Charles. And um, so, yeah. So, Charles, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you? Sure. Um, so, my name is, as Josh already said, Charles Moody. I am a nationally appointed U.S. missionary, also known as a home missionary to the south side of Chicago. About eight years ago, eight years ago, my family and I moved here from um, Yonkers, New York, um, to be a witness um, for the Lord. Uh, we packed up our our home, our two boys, um, and we moved out to the south side of Chicago without a job, without a church just with a call to be a witness on the south side of Chicago. Um, we are presently in the Inglewood community, um, which is one of the most violent communities in all of Chicago. Um, and the Lord called us, Josh, not just to um, pastor a church in his community, but to live among the people in the community to see what do they go through um, on a regular basis. Originally, my both my parents are from Jamaica, uh, my wife is Nigerian, um, nice. so moving to the south side of Chicago, even though most of the people were my complexion, the culture was totally different um, than what I was used to. And um, the reality is that some of the things that's going on here are, are some of the things that I witness on a regular basis. Um, so we have a church here that's dedicated um, to reaching people outside the walls of the church. So the Lord has called us to reach um, gangbangers and prostitutes, homeless, um, at-risk teens, um, people who's uh, addicted to all types of drugs and to, to rehab them. But the Lord, the real vision is the Lord didn't call us just to serve these people. The Lord called us to disciple them, to reach them for Christ and to let them know that God has a call on their life as well. So that's what we've been doing here the last eight years and just believing that God is going to continue to change the South side of Chicago. And that's me. You know, it, when, when I moved, when Angela and I moved to Chicago, uh, we moved to uh, Lincoln Park. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and uh, how can you explain to somebody that's never been to Chicago, mm -hmm. never been to Eng Englewood, Englewood, right? Not Englewood, like here in but. Englewood with an E, with an e. Uh, it, it, you, you don't understand what that area is like until mm -hmm. you're there. Like I know for me, when we would go down to visit you um, and other organizations down there, it, you were almost stepping into another world in a way. Yep. And um, the fact that you moved your family there, like you don't live in the burbs, you know, in a gated community or something. You are living there. And and I just remember seeing all the, <laughs> I just remember seeing, uh, you know, all the, you know, your basketball games and stuff that you were doing with the youth and, and the young people and stuff. Can you just share a little bit about um, how you're reaching the, the youth over there and stuff? Yeah. So, uh, so we have a, we're a church with an outreach focus. That's what I like to say to people. I like that. Um, so we do a lot of things. Um, to reach people on the street. So one of the things that we've done um, for the last, I want to say six years, well, before Corona came, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. but we would open the, our gym. We have a, our sanctuary is also a full court basketball court, awesome. um, which we open every Friday um, mm -hmm. to the community free of charge um, from seven to 10 PM. And this is like our violence prevention program. Um, all is welcome to come in, Josh. And one of the things that I always tell people, like as, as violent as, as this community has been or what people may even think, in over the six years that we've been opening the gym, we have only had four fights. Wow, wow. And, um, and these are wow. guys who are involved in gangs, but guys who are here in the community. And one thing that I love is that, like they, they're always appreciative that the gym is open because they know like no one else is doing this. Um, even if a fight is about to start, the guys usually put it out before I even get there. 
because uh, they just respect the place so much. Um, so we, we do those type of things. We started a preschool um, as well um, a few years ago. Um, I should say more than a few years. Yeah, a few years ago, we started a preschool with the vision um, of educating our children um, at a young age. So most of our four-year-olds who's in our preschool um, leave the preschool reading at wow. four years old. Wow. Um, and then we also give parents the opportunity to go back to school or to work. Um, so we give scholarships to these parents and we give them a certain amount of time to go get a job or go back to school. Because if you have a child, it's kind of hard to go look for a job or even apply for school. So what yeah. we do while we're educating their, their children, um, the parents is out looking for work. And through that relationship, now we have some of those same families who's attending our church um, today. So, and then you know about the outreaches and all the other stuff. Yeah. Man, that's amazing. That's amazing. Um, so with everything going on in the world right now, especially in America, um, we're seeing a lot of division, a lot of awareness. I think um, the awareness is, is extremely good. Uh, you know, the amount of awareness that we're seeing right now of the different ethnicities. Um, and I know, I know the, the enemies at work trying to divide us. Right. Um, but I think the, the church is going to rise up in a good way here um, with unity, um, the, the beauty of diversity. Yeah. Um, so can you can you share with us a little bit kind of what's going on in your heart about all this and, and kind of what you're feeling and, and stuff? I believe um, like what you just said, that's my, my sentiment, the same exact sentiment that I believe the church is going to be able to be a light. Um, mm -hmm. I'm optimistic that the church will. Um, because I'm seeing it now that right. an issue that has been an issue for centuries, Josh. Yeah. Like, this is not a new issue. This is something that has been going on forever. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Colin Kaepernick um, was trying to bring awareness to this issue um, right. when, he was knee, when, when he was taking a knee during the national anthem, just so that it could make people aware. But what has happened is that people have become distracted with him taking a knee and not becoming aware of what the issue has been. And I think America and the church at large, especially, especially the evangelical church, um, have not really used their voice or have not been aware or wanted to be aware of the issues of um, racial injustice that's been going on for, in America for a while. And I think because of this issue, um, with everything that's going on, I believe the church has been awakened mm. to what's going on. And I just believe that um, the conversations um, is gonna continue to happen, but we've been having conversations and peaceful protests since Martin Luther King in 1968. So you're talking about a 50 year span, over 50 years now of yeah. peaceful protests for trying to bring inequality um, mm -hmm. to, to all races, not just the white race, but um, to yeah. all races. That was Martin Luther King's thing. It wasn't just about black people. It was about right. all people. Mm -hmm. And um, since his death, um, America has really not really made any um, big leaps in this area. But I believe since the George Floyd case, um, I believe that people are no longer going to just speak, but I'm believing that people's also going to vote um, the right decision. Right. Uh, I've been speaking to some of my other brothers, and I would say in the evangelical church, we're pretty much a pro-life movement, right? right. Um, I know we always say that we're not political, but for some reason, um, we know who to vote for. We know who's pro-life, right? Right. It's political. Um, but I've just been asking my, my brothers and sisters um, that we no longer could just vote for candidates who's pro-life. We need to yeah. vote for candidates who are whole life. Mm. Um, we need to vote well, for people who's um, looking at the, the whole life of the individual from the cradle yeah. to the grave. Right. And I think that we've been content as a church to say that um, the sanctity of life um, is the most important issue. But I think all life, you know what I mean? Every area yeah. of life is very important. And I think once we all start making our voices heard to our political officials, then we're going to begin to see some systematic change. In yeah. America. Um, what do you think are some things we as Christians here in Orange County 
um, uh, what can we do? Um, I, you, you said it, you know, voting right. Um, you know, definitely, I think that's, that's going to be huge and key. Um, you know, leaders that bring unity. Uh, what do you think are some things that we can do that can help mm -hmm. or, you know, help bring change? Right. So um, I believe one thing that folks really need to do is to become intentional about being aware mm. um, because you really can't help if you're ignorant to what's going right. on. And, I, and, and, and you said it a couple of times, like you haven't even really thought about things because it's outside of your sphere. Right. And so I believe like even myself, like before, I think I have been watching, watching national news and world news since I moved to Chicago. Mm -hmm. um, but when I was in New York, I was really ignorant to things that was happening around the nations, unless it was complete, like it was publicized. Um, right. Media is hitting it. But the reality is that like, I have to become more intentional about what's going on nationally. Like I listen to N NPR news. Mm -hmm. um, not saying that they're the greatest news, but they deal with the world. They deal, deal with the nation. So I'm getting a little piece of everything. And I think right. um, everyone, not just white people, I think we all have to become, become intentional about um, what's going on in different parts of our community so that yeah. we can make some decisions that's gonna bring about change. Because the reality is if you don't know what's going on, the only change you're gonna make is those that's around you. But um, systematic change and all those, um, Inter inequalities, those type of things are not going to happen unless we're really intentional about what's going on with my black brothers and sisters, my Hispanic right. uh, brothers and sisters, my white brothers, like all races, what's going on? Um, yeah. But I have a voice in this area. Right. And I know um, maybe you can uh, give us an idea of your community. Like, I, I, um, like what's the difference between the north side of Chicago and the south side of Chicago? Mm -hmm. I think that's a, a, a good picture of the kind of inequalities you're talking about. Um, right. Not just the, obviously the police brutality that we've seen, obviously that people, everyone's like, no. But I think it's even deeper than that and more than that. I mean, just in the difference between those two communities, right? right? And I think that people don't understand um, is that um, the, the communities are, as much as we don't want to admit it, they, they are racially divided. They are. You know, uh, the north side, uh, mostly white people. Yeah. Uh, south side, mostly black people. In fact, I ain't going to the south side alone past 10 o'clock at night, you know. But just like maybe a, a black brother doesn't want to go to the north side at 10 o'clock at night alone. It's yeah. it's, 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 it's similar. Mm -hmm. And yeah. And so um, those of the those of people who don't know about Chicago. I mean, Chicago is, is probably one of the most segregated cities in the world. Inglewood is about 96% African-American. Wow. Um, the South side of Chicago is about 96% African-American. So when people hear about the shootings in the news, um, that it's a black on black crime, the reality is that um, there's no one else in the area that looks different. So there's only one thing. Hold, hold on, hold on. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm on a phone call right now. We're not we don't have any food today. I'm I'm on a phone call right now. I'm on a Zoom call. It's good. No, I don't have any food today. All right, God bless you. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the real Charles Moody here running an organization. All Same right, God bless you, buddy. Good to see you. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Uh, I love it. I love it, man. Um, yeah, I'm sitting in the sanctuary with the doors open, so anything can happen. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, yeah, so it's really, Chicago's really segregated. Um, so North Side, like you said, majority is white. Um, the public school system, pretty good. Um, the, the protection, pretty good. Um, the, like, one of the big issues, like I've been hearing it over and over again, like if the children don't feel safe, how could they learn, right? If all you're thinking about is survival, how could you think about anything else? Um, it's amazing, there's a lady in my church, she has about five, five or six kids. Mm -hmm. And like two of her children have been the valedictorian, um, one high school and middle school, and her son was the valedictorian for 
his junior high school. Wow. And I always say, I wonder what their life would have looked like if they grew up on the North side. Mm, like the wow. opportunities that they would have had because they're brilliant already. Right. These kids are getting full scholarships, scoring high on the SATs. Like these are brilliant individuals, right? Um, but they're in the inner city with so yeah. many different issues um, that's attacking them. But I always think like, man, I wonder what, like it would have been limitless. Um, right. And, um, and the opportunities that they would have had if they were in a different school system. Yeah. But the way how the police, so a few weeks ago when the looting start um, in my area, if you could go on my Facebook live and you would see me recording people loot the mall across the street and you will not see any police in sight stopping or wow. trying to control what's going on. Now, wow. I just want to give you the picture of the disparities. Um, on the north side of Chicago, they, how y'all doing? I'm recording. How y'all doing? I'm recording. So, y'all got to say hello to Josh. Hello, Josh. Hey. <laughs> hey, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, the disparities, the, on the south, on the north side of Chicago, they stopped the trains from running from 47th Street to the city, so north. Oh but the train system was still open going from the 47th Street to the south side. So the last stop was on 47th Street. Wow. So you couldn't go north at the 47th Street, but you could continue to go south. Wow. So, and then every exit to get into the city was completely blocked off by the snow trucks and police officers. So the, nor the north side was completely protected wow. where the south side was wide open. And for two hours, I watched people loot the mall across the street with no help. Um, I have never felt abandoned in my life, but that day I felt like our city officials abandoned us. Wow. That's the kind of the disparities that goes on um, on the South side, that one side you could definitely see is treated. And I get it, Josh, economically, 60% um, of Chicago's revenue comes from the city. Right. So you want to protect your, your, your city, but at the same time, at what, at what, for, like at, at what level um, yeah. do you forsake the rest of the city? Uh, maybe, uh, why don't you share as a, as a, as a, as a Christian, as a pastor, as a missionary, as a father, and, and as an African American, um, can you share your heart with our people? Like, what what that means for you, and, or like maybe experiences you've had, or um, you know, if you know what I mean. Um, you I'm know, because that I'm just going to share a, a recent a situation that happened. Um, my son is a senior in high school this year. Um, wow. I'm athlete um doesn't you, you don't look old enough to have a senior <laughs> i know started young started young josh <laughs> um, um um doesn't use drugs not in not in gang he has a job he works um he just got his driver's license in uh i think november he just got his driver's license so he's been driving our car everywhere um <laughs> I mean, him and his couple of his buddies went out one night this February, 2020, went out and um, the police pulled him over because he forgot to turn on his headlights. Mm. This is a good reason to get stopped by the police. Right. Yeah. You're not supposed to drive without your headlights being on. Right. So granted, he gets pulled over for not having his headlights on. Um, yeah. So the cop asked him, why don't you have your headlights on? He said, I just forgot, officer. One of his buddies is in the back is recording the the stop and he asked the police officer sir is it okay if i record the stop and the cop asked him and this is the question that listen uh, african young african male has to ask this question sir could i record the stop and the cop asked him why are you recording the stop the stop and one of my friends son's friends said for safety reasons wow i'm wow. recording the stop because of safety wow. reasons because of things that has happened in our community. 
So the cop said, well, since you want to record for safety reasons, we have protocols to stay safe too. Everybody get out of the car. So he takes my son and all four of his other friends out of the car. So now they're standing behind the car um, and then the cop handcuffs my son and all of his friends together. Wow. Um, in the car. And then he proceeded wow. to search my vehicle illegally. Wow. Um, after he searched the car, there was no drugs. There was nothing in there that he could find. He tells my son, you're released. You could go. I just let the kids go with no, no rhyme or reason why they were pulled over. Yeah. He just let them go. Um, wow. This is some of the stuff that happened on the south side of Chicago on a regular basis. Now, the difference is this. I'm, a, I'm 41 years old. Um, I have never had handcuffs put on me in 41 years of my life. Wow. It's crazy to say, but that's a goal of mine in my life, to wow. never, ever be arrested by police. Like, how many white people do you know that would say, my goal in life is never to be arrested? Man. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's, that's definitely not a goal I've thought about. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but that's my goal, to never ever have handcuffs put on my wrist. But my 17-year-old son mm. already experienced that in his life. Wow. Um, so if, for me, being a Black man, if I want to see change, I have to report things. And that's what my wife and I did. There's an organization called COPA that's supposed to be an accountability a civilian accountability corp um, organization um, that keeps police officers accountable. So my wife and I, we reported the incident um, to the police and they don't really have any legal um, power, but all they could do is recommend what, what should happen to this police officer. Um, so that happened in February. I was on a mission trip. Um, I was in Guatemala at the time when this happened. Guatemala. My, yeah. <laughs> so I was in My Guatemala. wife's not Guatemalan. Oh yeah. Yeah. Beautiful country. Yeah. So we went on this, um, went on this trip, um, came back. And once we came back from the trip, we were able to report, um, report the incident, what happened. And um, then the coronavirus took off. So that was February, March, everything was shut down. So we're still waiting yeah. for what they recommended to the police department. Mm. Wow. So that's just, so that's just the incident, like a real life, of what people could hear. And um, as an African-American, I have a lot of white friends, Josh. Yeah. I'm a missionary. Most of my mission teams that come and serve alongside of me are white people. Um, I love white people. I'm from New York. My best friend was a white guy and a Dominican guy. Um, if you look at my wedding picture, you'll see the white guy and the Dominican guy in my wedding picture. So I come from a very diverse background. Um, so I love all people, but I would say like ever since the George Floyd incident, what I've been asking some of my, my brothers and sisters um, from the white race, different races as well, of saying when injustice take place, I need to hear your voice. Mm. Uh, it's not okay um, for these things to happen. And I need you to say that. I need to hear you say, this is not right. But I'm asking them now to say, I don't just want to hear your voice and say that's not okay. I need you to hold your president accountable. I need you to hold your senators accountable. I need you to hold your mayors, your governors. I need you to hold all these people accountable if we're going to see change in America. We can't just feel bad that this happened to a black man and you wish it didn't happen. The only way things is going to happen is from inside. It's from the inside out. And we are the ones who put representatives to represent us. So if your representative is not making a noise about the injustice that's happening, you have to tell your representative, I'm going to have to find someone else to represent me because you're not doing a good job. Right. Um, that, that's so good, man. Um, I, I, my concern, I think, is for us that... Uh, Other day. My Sorry. concern is in a, oh, no, you're good, man. Uh, my concern is in a few weeks when all the protests stop and the media stops reporting, um, we forget again. Yep. Um, we, you know, it's uh, in, injustice isn't as important 
um, to us because it's not headline news until uh, the next situation happens. What, yeah. what would you say we can do to, uh, well, one of the things I think what I felt the Holy Spirit tell me was to begin listening, number one. Yeah. He told me it's time to stop having opinions that you've formed through whatever experiences and start listening. Mm -hmm. And that's why, you know, that's why I called you and talking to you. Um, but what would you say, what's something I can do uh, or we can do to keep this awareness going? Um, this might be a stupid question. I don't know. Um, but, you know, that this doesn't fall fall by the wayside and we forget and, until the next situation, you know. Um, well, Josh, um, you, 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 ever, you heard this slogan before, lest we forget. Yes. Right. Yeah. You heard that 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 um, slogan for the 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 veterans. Yep. Right. Yep. And um, right. unless we forget, right, we never want to forget the sacrifice that they made. Right. Um, and this is the reality. Um, we cannot, if we forget, if we forget what has taken place, um, what we've seen this past year with the rioting and all that is going to happen again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's going to happen again. So we have to make sure that we don't forget um, because what we witnessed this past, these past couple of weeks, it's going to, it's going to be a reminder and it's only going to get worse. Right. Um, it's not going to get better. It's only going to get worse. I don't know if it was too windy out there. So. <laughs> You know, the kids to practice they're practicing right now oh yeah so, um so we can't you guys can practice um so we can't we can't forget um what happened um or else it's gonna happen again like we have to yeah. be aware um one of my, i'm gonna be honest with you like there's always been a lot of protests and things going on in chicago and one of my reasons why I never got involved in them is because nothing ever came about them. You know, I would go to a couple of protests, but I wouldn't go because the pro like, okay, we made noise, we stopped traffic, we did all these things. Um, what's going to how are things gonna change? Right. And um, if we forget we're going to have a rude awakening and that's going to happen. And I love what you said about um, listening. Like I have, um, like I've been calling about people, like, you know, people make Facebook comments and, um, and they're so angry about the looting and all that other stuff. Yeah. It's just a distraction from the real problem. Right. Like I hear people so angry that people's stores were looted and set on fire, but that same anger does not come about when there's a black man who had a knee on his throat and died, where, where so was true. that? Where was that anger? Right. Like right. I need, I need you to have that same type of anger. Like don't sit there and get distracted by the looting. Like all that stuff could be rebuilt. Right. All those things could be repurchased, yeah. but what cannot be, what cannot come back is the life of that man. Yeah. And I do not condone looting. Right. Right. But you refuse to understand the reason why right when things are not going to change and that's why listening is good and trying to understand what's going on what is my brother's yeah. sister actually trying to say i don't want to take much more of your time but i would i want to list this final um comment from you um just being totally real uh and raw uh what would you say to the individual that's maybe listening, going to be listening when this is released, that says uh, they're in denial about it, you know, or they say it, yeah, you know, you know, bad things happen, or you know, I don't believe that there's systematic racism, you know, I don't believe that, you know, that it was a racist act or or things like that, or that's, you know, what would you say to that person? Yeah, being that real. Yeah. Charles Moody, pastor, father, yeah. missionary. What do you say? I would probably still ask that person, do they even have any black friends? Mm. And, um, mm. and, I, and I guarantee you the answer would be no. 
Mm. And I would tell that person to go and um, build relationships with people of the different races other than I love that. Um, I love that. I work with Moody Bible Institute and a majority of their students are white, right? Mm. And um, and I, I have a gentleman um, who live in my neighborhood and I asked them, how many black friends do you have that has come to your house and have had dinner with you, black friends? Mm -hmm. And he said, I don't know. And I asked his wife and she said, um, none. And yeah. I said, because you don't have relationships with people of different ethnicities, you only have one view. And most of the people who you hang out with thinks like you. Right, yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? So those people who say racism, it doesn't exist. I guarantee you, they do not have friends. Like I'm not talking about associates. I'm talking about friends that actually come to your house. You know them, you know their right. children, name their wife. Like I'm talking about friends. I guarantee you that person doesn't have any deep relationships with any African-American who mm -hmm. could share that experience with them because if wow. they did, they would understand. So I would tell them, go find some people of different ethnicities and befriend them and you will begin to see that there's different because if all you know is white people all you know is the things that go on in your life yeah well that's what i would oh, tell them i love that no that that's that's huge i think that's huge um i i love it i think that's beautiful i think that's really good so but um thank you so much pastor reverend reverend moody thank you so much man i, I appreciate you um uh, I wish I got to see you more often, man. Uh, one of these days, I'd love to be able to take a team up there. Yeah. You know, to Bring Chicago. me out to California. I'll come out there to you. Yeah, man. You guys come out here. We'll take you to Disneyland. Have a good time. Go to the beach. And I tried awesome. to take my boys to Disneyland. They told me no. Last time what? I was there, they didn't want to go. They told me to give them the money. What? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you, you tell your boys that if they come out here, it's on us, man. We'll, we'll take them to Disneyland. We'll show them a good time. They're grown now. I told, them, <laughs> I told them to experience life while I was in dad's pocket. Now you're grown. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Oh, Thanks. Pastor, thank you so much, man. Thank you for sharing your heart and um, uh, praying for you um, and uh, your church and your people and your outreach and everything. Hey, can you close this off with prayer? Sure. And just thank you. I thank you again, Joshua, even taking this time out. I appreciate you to, to learn, to be willing thank to learn. You. I understand. I appreciate that. And um, I believe these conversations are going to be great. Yeah. So. Hopefully we can have more of them again. I don't, I, you know, we, we, I want to keep this going. We'll have, you know, have conversations often. Um, obviously um, our relationship and um, it's helping me learn, um, you know, uh, so much. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's pray. So Father, I thank you. I thank you for this opportunity, Lord God, to um, just even speak. Lord God, I, your word declares that a kingdom divided against itself shall fall. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you would bind the body of Christ together with tight cords of love. Yes. That your love, Lord God, would transcend the, the, the inequality, the racial issues of America, Lord God, I pray that your love would bind us together, that it will bring about true peace, Lord God, and comfort, even in the midst of the storm. Jesus, you already told us in your world, word that in this world, we will have trouble, Lord God, but your word also declared that you have overcome this world. So I pray even with the racial um, inequalities in this community that it will not divide your church, but that it would bring us together. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you would give us ears to hear one another, Lord God, that you would give us eyes to see and a heart that would obey your word, Lord God, and love each other. Your word also tells us that this world would see that we are your disciples by the way that we love one another. So Lord, I pray that this would be the greatest hour for your church as we love one another. I pray that you would be glorified in all that we do in the strong name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen, amen. Hey brother, thank you so much again. I appreciate you. You're welcome. God bless you, Josh, and your God kids. bless you. Tell your wife we said hi. All right, I will I think, do. All right, man. All right, God bless you. Bless you, brother. We'll talk to you later. Goodbye. Bye.